If you are building in the Spire Coast, stop, stop now. Switch your build tool for your Fix-It coffee mug and snuggle your favorite doggo because you need to hear about what the developer said concerning upcoming updates to include the 1.0 release. Before I show you that, I want you to have a little bit of context in case you haven't seen one of my satisfactory videos before. I make videos that, in a large part, have a focus on planning large, biome-wide mega factories. Modular, efficient base design and building are well within my wheelhouse so whenever I discover something that could cost me and those that watch a lot of our precious time, I will point it out, even if it is old news. If you have seen the coffee stain video that shows the heat map of where things are going, you may not have yet seen the recent video with coffee stains Snut and Jace, where they specifically warn players not to build up too much in the Spire Coast, and they are specifically referring to Beyond Update 5 as far as I can tell. I play Satisfactory all the time, and only just found out about this myself. I'll link the short clip in the description below. Well, as you can see, that's where I was considering going next, and I'm glad I didn't. It just seemed logical to build my next area right on the other side of this plateau train hub. So, looking at the white area of the heat map, do not build here if you plan on continuing this save for at least the duration of this year, 2022. Unless you don't mind starting a new save when the change happens, there will be a lot of changes to terrain here. My unique situation that makes this even more crazy is that I only play games that have what I consider long-term playability. You know all too well Satisfactory can easily go north of a thousand hours on a single save. If you have already built here, my hope is to give you as much of a heads up as possible. Not to worry, I have some tips on designing and planning your base in Satisfactory. One video is already out there, and was received quite well within the community. This video will follow up on the aesthetic portions of Megabase designing and planning, so they should complement each other. Not to worry, if you just discovered you will have to move from the coast in the future, that's the only bad news in this video. I'm not going to just tell you about it and leave you to drown in conveyor belts and screws. No, let's go over the best aesthetic design and planning strategies I have to share with you, and why you shouldn't stress over the look until you have finished moving. I'll be sure to link the first Megabase planning video on the screen. Cheer up! Don't squeeze doggo too hard or burn your lips with the coffee. Let's start with why you should wait to decorate. Whether you are just finishing a new structure or discover you have to move, I have previously recommended building your bases as update friendly as possible. Of course, it's impossible to predict all of the terrain changes with the updates, but seriously, that heat map or map or roadmap as they called it is absolutely wonderful. However, you can ensure that you do a couple of things. First, build your roads and ground floors high. Second, don't do too much custom detailing or freeform placement. Let's not forget the game is still in early access. That is, if you want to preserve your safes for as long as possible, you will also wait to decorate, for several reasons that I haven't really covered yet, but now is a good time as any in light of the situation. When you play Satisfactory, do you complete each structure's look before moving on to the next build? Today, we will go over the benefits of waiting to complete an area's function before you put any significant time into decoration. We will talk about the benefits of choosing a theme, sticking to production first. I'll show you how to keep yourself focused and organized in order to not only encourage creativity, but to avoid time sink or creativity creep as I call it. Stick around and learn to incorporate my design process when you are playing Satisfactory. Let's get into it. When playing, it is critical to make sure you have enough space to not only squeeze your production lines into the area you selected, but to have enough clearance for your own creativity once the build is complete. Most of you play Playing this game and watching this video are already very good at knowing what size floors or foundations you will need. You also know that ensuring you plan your builds for expansion is one of the most important steps. But what else? Why do I recommend to decorate until after you have established yourself in an area or biome? Starting with maximizing your productivity in terms of your playtime. If you delay gratification and decorate after you are established, you have a chance to finish analyzing any bottlenecks or situations unique to your build. You simply save time and get more out of your play session if you tackle decorations in a phase type way as a whole. Doing this allows you to avoid mistakes, and ensures that each structure has taken all of the space that it needs. You will see how your structures interact with each other in an area, how big they are, how spaced apart they are, all of that should be considered when designing your theme. We will get more into that later. I mentioned waiting to decorate will actually encourage your creativity. Let me explain. 
If you delay the decorative art pass and focus on functionality, your builds will develop their framework early on. You will have open space to expand and address things as they pop up, and you won't have to tear down and rebuild. Further, a more directly visible or tangible result is that if you wait to decorate, you will have the time to unlock all of the building pieces in the awesome shop. And of course, you will be further along in your playthrough, and have access to the right tiers of transport logistics. Waiting to decorate will also encourage creativity because you will have time to process the design. If you immediately begin decorating as you are building the factory or as soon as you finish each structure, I find that I am more likely to have issues with consistency from structure to structure. However, I discovered in other games that if I wait until I'm ready to move to another area or biome, I find that I not only have a more consistent theme, but I am dedicating time specifically to being creative. No numbers, no material transport, just raw creation. After spending sometimes hundreds of hours in an area before I go through the cosmetic pass, I find that I hype myself up for it and have something to work toward. If you do it when you are ready to move to a new area, you will find that you set a loose time frame on yourself, and you will only decorate as long as you can stand to do so before your desire to start harvesting more materials pulls you away. In this way, I have learned to trick my brain to keep me moving at my own pace without encountering creative or option paralysis. We don't want to be overwhelmed when we are supposed to be relaxing during game time. There are, of course, always exceptions. Sometimes you just want to do a little decoration, as every so often you know exactly what look you are going for. Also, I know a lot of folks that play this game will completely delete areas and start over. I am not a fan of this style, as I like to do something right the first time. I can just start another save if I want to try a different approach. I do not agree with deleting and starting over. If I took the time to build it, I'm going to rock it. The only deletions I'll ever make are during the actual cosmetic process process, not after, to each his own, but choosing to willingly rebuild an area is just not my style. I see it as a transgression against my past self, a disrespect for the creativity that came before. If I have to rebuild, I consider it to be a critical failure with my playstyle tactics, modular, organic, efficient results. You may say to me, okay, the when and why makes sense, and I can think of a million other reasons why you should wait to paint and decorate, but what about how, Fry? How do you design a theme for your builds? Let's start with inspiration. There are many ways to be inspired, but I'll go over the three main sources of inspiration that I have or employ. First, I pull inspiration from media I consume. In my case, I am often inspired watching my favorite sci-fi movies or shows. I'll see a style of architecture that I really love while playing the game, and it will get my gears spinning. Second, I pull inspiration from the size and spacing of my modules. Because I build repeatable structures or floor plan modules, I am able to pull inspiration not only from the structure itself, but from the considerations of the factory lines as a whole. This type of inspiration can be seen throughout my desert build. Take a look here. Directional orientation, the flow of resources, the height of each structure, all of that helps to do the work for me. Third, I pull inspiration from the environment itself. Where am I decorating? Where am I at my playthrough? What kind of sci-fi story could I see taking place here? What would it actually look like if a little industry or pioneer town were to already exist here? How would they interact with the terrain? You get it. Moving on from how I get my inspiration, let's dive into turning inspiration into a plan. We start with the name. I name my structures or areas once I have an idea where my inspiration is taking me. This helps design your theme in several ways. When you name a structure, it has an implied purpose. This helps establish the scope of the project in the back of your mind. The earlier you can come up with a name that fits, the better, because while you are building the factories for functionality, the name will be in the back of your mind, allowing you to process and really soul search the design while you are moving belts, placing smelting refineries, and so on. This gives you the added benefit of something to focus on while doing tedious tasks. So the design process shouldn't actually start once you are done getting the factory online. In fact, the design is actually starting to take shape long before you ever break out the paint gun. We have a name now. We know that naming each build area helps us to focus and get an idea of the theme. We have established some overall benefits as to why we should wait to go paint happy, so how to lock it in. This is where the TFI building style takes over. Identify your hog, or the portion of the project phase that will likely take up the most of your time. For this desert concept, I have decided that roads would be my hog, so that's where I will start. 
Applying an organic and modular ad hoc approach, I knew that I needed to spend time on the road system. It doesn't have to be identical to other roads if I come up with another design later in my playthrough but it needs to be somewhat consistent. With this considered, I know that the claw is supposed to be a space elevator of sorts, harvesting resources from the planet in the shape of the claw. So I think it should have a raw, scrappy look, possibly with elements of brutalism. This area should look well used, but also well maintained. Keeping those thoughts in mind, I designed my road system to be repeatable, scrappy, and functional. Great. Early on in the playthrough, I decided that my roads should be at least five foundations wide to allow for resources and vehicular transportation. At this point, I am truly able to focus on creativity and not throughput or routing resources in less than ideal situations. Once the road system is starting to take shape, I don't necessarily have to completely nail all of the assets on the first pass. I'll be traveling up and down these roads as I work on the other structures, so I am able to relieve internal pressure and remind myself that I can always add to the design later. When you are finishing your road designs, you may find while working on another structure in the area a new technique or repeatable touch that you want to add to the roads, adding to your theme's asset pool. The design should begin to take shape in your head at this point. There's no need to completely commit to a design, theme, or specific shape all the way down to graph paper. This approach to designing your theme allows for flexibility when the inspiration strikes you, and I have found that it contributes to more engagement during your play sessions by enabling you to keep moving in a fluid fashion without stopping. This brings us to maintaining scope and minimizing creative creep. The best way to approach this is by booping that like button to let me know that you want more satisfactory videos. Okay. That's not how to maintain scope or minimize creep, but booping that like button really does help me determine if you are getting the content that you really want, and helps the channel show up for people that may be interested in some more satisfactory in their YouTube feed. Phew, I need to shorten that some more. When it comes to defining your scope for a project, the decorative path should be included and considered even before you get your production lines up and going. No, I'm not saying you should limit your creativity or decorate as little as possible and focus solely on production efficiency. Not at all. I'm saying that if you are the kind of player who doesn't have a blank check for time when it comes to your play sessions, I have some ways you can manage scope or what I call creative creep. First, you take a moment to consider your build style. I defined this in a previous video. Be sure to check it out if you want a more detailed breakdown of building styles. The three building style approaches I use when playing base building games and satisfactory are organic or ad hoc design, commitment to shape, and raw production focus. Starting with the first, consider whether or not you build organically in an ad hoc fashion where you plan to expand or are expanding as needed. This allows you to not only play the game as you want, but helps keep you committed to building what you need, where you need it. I'd rather not have everything in one or two mega structures. I want to complement the environment with my builds, even if they are industry production oriented. Further, by building modular, I'm able to keep my footprint more realistic in terms of structures I end up with which also helps inform my design choices later on when it's time to trim and paint. This is an easy way to align your goal or goals with your current project phase while considering your future endeavors in the area. Continuing with minimizing scope and creativity creep, let's discuss why I would ever recommend a commitment to a shape. If you think to yourself, wouldn't that be cool if I could build a power plant actually at the water level over here? Or, wouldn't it be awesome to see a skyscraper factory in this spot? You are in the right frame of mind for that build style. Commit to a general shape or structural design, and try to keep things angular. You can freeform and smooth cosmetic structural flare out later. This is loose, but helps keep an end goal in mind for each structure and how to arrange factory modules to complement that eventual design pass. And finally, considering your build style completely fits with your desire for production yields, when you focus on a a particular level of production and get that in place. This helps not only the design process later in terms of rebuilding and expanding, but it also helps keep things organic. Let's use the Claw's central refinery column as an example. I knew that I needed a certain amount of refineries after using the in-game calculator way back in the early tiers. 
Once I was able to build one refinery and determine the clearance, I designed the modules long before it was ready to be turned on. I knew I needed six floors, three for copper and three for iron. I found a reasonable, rounded number that made sense in terms of each module's clearance, but didn't make it so spaced out that I ended up with an echo chamber for a base. I like the balance that employing these three build styles together produces, and I like how the third build style is rigid, but ends up producing some of the most organic, surprising results. That is, is, I never really know what the end result is going to look like, and that adds a huge amount of suspense, motivation, and fun while I am working on it. That does it for today's video. If you liked today's video and would like to see more Satisfactory, check out my channel as there is a pretty sizable list of those videos coming up, with more on the way and some already posted. Check out the top of the screen, I linked the channel there for you. This goes for subscribers too, there may be an upload or two you missed. I really do need your help to create a community that showcases what regular working folk with a little bit of creativity, industrialism, and automation can produce, both for gaming entertainment and for brain food. Lastly, if you made it this far in the video and you liked my content, please boop that like button and make sure it sticks. Subscribe if you think I earned it and share this video with friends. The content is going to keep coming either way. But I sure would like to reach more people with positive content. It really is that simple. Oh, and please check out my Reddit page. That's where I'm posting the latest info on upcoming stuff for the time being. All links will always be in the description of every video. The fried industry needs you. Stay fresh, stay effective, and stay you.